Go ahead and stand up. Glad you're here. We're going to worship tonight. Are you excited to worship the Lord? Amen? <laughs> all right, all right. I'll take that. It was a little slow roll. That's all right, all right. But now that's it. We're in it. There's no way you can go home now. We're here. So let's worship and just glorify the, the, the name of the Lord. There's only one king, and uh, as we lift our voices to him, man, he is worthy of our praise. Amen? Amen. Amen. Sing this with me.
Young people cry, holy, 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 there is no
everything that I've got. I'm singing at the top of my lungs because you're worth You're worth it all. I'm giving everything that I've got. I'm singing at the top of my lungs because you're worth of all of our praise, God. You alone are holy enough for us to stand in this room and declare our devotion in our lives to God. It's you that are worthy. We thank you, God, for your presence in this room. We thank you, Lord, that when we, when we come here with open hearts, Lord, that you meet us, that you show up. And so, God, we want to stand before you open to allow your word to breathe life into us, God that we would sense your presence here tonight, that we would know you're here, God. We thank you for that, and we love you. We pray these things in the powerful name of Jesus. Would you say amen as you're seated tonight? Amen. You can go ahead and be seated. Welcome to Capel Church. We are one church meeting in multiple locations. My name is Dustin, and I'm the youth pastor at the Bedford location. If you are new with us, we are so glad uh, that you have joined us. Uh, I just want to uh, point your attention uh, to our digital connection card. You can access this by using our app, which can be found by searching Capel Church in any of the mobile app stores. Uh, you can just click that button on connection. You can uh, do it it's very quick and easy that way. Or you can go to the Welcome Center, which is in our lobby. Uh, if you give them your connect card or fill it out right there, you can get yourself a compelled church coffee mug and a welcome packet. And it's just a way for us to say thank you for joining with us. If you would like to give with us, we do not take a traditional offering here at Compelled, but you can give on our website, compelled.church. You can give through the app, uh, which is quick and easy as well, or you can give on your right after you exit the worship center. There's some envelopes in the back. Compelled families. Pastor Scotty's got a great night planned for you guys this Sunday night, or if you're here Sunday, tonight at 6 o'clock, Aquapalooza. So I'm assuming you guys will be getting everyone really wet and having a great night with some water games. Uh, you might get hit by a water balloon, who knows. But this is going to be a great, fun, free uh, night for your families. So be here, bring a towel, bring something to get wet in, 6 o'clock. Focus Vacation Bible School is going to be here before you know it. I know many of you took donation cards last week to bring supplies in. Uh, we are so thankful for your generosity in that. But we would also love some people to jump in and serve with us this VBS. And the quickest way that you can uh, sign up to serve is just by going to our app. And right when you open, the, right when you open it, there is a VBS uh, volunteer button. Just click that and sign up to serve and get ready to have one of the best weeks of your summer with our kids. That is all the announcements we have for you. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your gathering. In case you haven't figured out, I'm not Pastor Nate. I'd like to say I'm a little bit better looking, but maybe I don't. That didn't get as many laughs as I thought it would. Are, we, are you guys okay? Are you guys good? <laughs> All right, cool. Well, hey, just a couple of things to highlight what Pastor Dusty said. We are having Aquapalooza tomorrow night. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be so much fun. Um, there's going to be a couple slip and slides. There's going to be some water balloons. If you have kids with squirt guns, bring them out. If you are a big kid at heart and have squirt guns, bring them out. And uh, we're going to have a dunk tank as well. And so it's going to be a really, really good time. Uh, and it all kicks off at 6 o'clock tomorrow night. So make sure you uh, are here for that. And then also uh, VBS is uh, ramping up. We're getting ready to go. It's just a few weeks away. I'm super excited. I can't wait uh, to be able to, to dive into that. And um, uh, like it was said in announcements, we're still looking for some help. And uh, we could use people to lead crews and to be assistant crew leaders. And so if you go on the app, click on the VBS volunteers, or you can message me directly uh, to figure out where the app is and get that squared away. If you're looking to also donate, we still have donation cards uh, available. Uh, but you would contact the church office and talk to Megan. Uh, Megan has all of those, and she'll uh, get those to you uh, if you'd like to be involved that way. Yes, awesome. We are having a great time here at Compelled Church talking about visible and how Jesus is 
visible. Let me take a second just to uh, say what's up to those watching online. What's up? How's it going? So glad you're joining with us. And uh, man, it's just, it's so, uh, such an honor and a privilege to be here. I also want to take just a few moments and say thank you. Uh, Thank you to Pastor Nate and Wendy. Um, Thank you for believing in Melissa and I and uh, giving us this opportunity to share the word. To uh, to Pastors Rick, uh, Matt, Dusty, Med, uh, they're all amazing and awesome to work with. And all of our support staff, uh, man, they look us, they make us look real good, (laughs) right? Uh, Compelled, I don't know if you guys know this, but we have an incredible staff. Would you just show your appreciation and thanks to the staff at Compelled? and finally, my, my wife and my family. Um, my wife, she is a saint. She's amazing. Um, she's in the back with, with some of the kids right now. Uh, and so if you see her tonight, just uh, tell her that I'm super appreciative that she's my wife. <laughs> and uh, and I, I, I married up. Uh, I think I, I, I kind of shared that last time I spoke. Um, and uh, fellas, if you're married and you know what I mean by you married up, can I get a big amen? Amen. Awesome. Absolutely. So um, we have been in this series titled Visible, and uh, we've been talking about how Jesus is visible in our lives and in the world around us, and can we see Jesus, and how can we make him seen? And uh, it's been a really great series, and I've absolutely loved listening to to, to Pastor Nate's messages on it, and and this week I want to continue that conversation, and I want to talk about how Jesus is visible during tough times. How is Jesus visible during suffering? Um, Pastor Nate asked me if I would preach as, as he's on vacation, and, and I said, yeah, absolutely, man, I'm in. I said, what do you want me to preach on? He said, I want you to talk about suffering. Great, I'm in, thanks, bro. Uh, yeah, so, but it's gonna be great. It's a great topic, it's a great message, and it's, it's, if you don't know it, let me just throw this out there. Suffering is a normal part of the Christian life. If you spend any time in relationship or following Jesus, you know that tough times, difficulty is to be expected. And that's okay, and that's okay. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that uh, as we dive in tonight. Do you have your Bibles with you or your smartphone Bibles, Bible app? If you have the Compelled app, you can find uh, the Bible app in there as well. Go ahead and get that out. Let's give a big Compelled shout out to 2 Corinthians 4. Yes, that's my favorite part, I love it. Anytime that I, uh, that I give a message, as you guys turn there, anytime I, I, I have the opportunity to speak and talk in the kids' ministry, I tell them, I said, listen, um, when your grown-up comes to pick you up, mom, dad, grandparent, grandpa, aunt, uncle, whoever it is that brought you to church today, when they come pick you up, they're probably going to ask you one very important question. What do you guys think that question is? What do you ask your kids when you pick them up from church? What did you learn today? Absolutely. And you kind of see their faces go. You know, and I said, don't worry. It's okay. It's okay because I've got the big answer. I've got your big answer. And what the big answer does is it takes absolutely everything that we talk about and it squeezes it down into one itty bitty little sentence that you can remember so that you can answer the big question. You'll hear me talk about the big answer tonight for this weekend's message. Let's read together. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, these are verses 7 through 11. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are all, for we who are alive are always been given over to death for Jesus' sake so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal bodies. Would you pray with me? Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come before you tonight. Lord, and we just uh, remove any and all distraction from, uh, from our lives, Lord, from our minds, from our world right now, God, and we just want to spend some time with you. Uh, Lord, we want to see you, God. We've been talking about how to make Jesus visible and how Jesus is visible, so, so God, we, we're looking for you tonight, and God, we just pray that you would have your way. Holy Spirit, please be the words that I speak tonight. Take my flesh out of the equation, Lord, as you speak to the hearts and the minds of the people that are watching, that are listening, that are here tonight. We thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 
Amen. So I was, I was 10 years old, and it was the fall, I'm sorry, it was the winter, the winter of my fifth grade year. And uh, at that time, I was just getting into athletics. I had played football that previous fall, and I was at a, a basketball camp on the weekends. And, and as I'm going in this basketball camp, I started limping, right? And my parents were like, oh, Scotty, what's going on? Are you hurt? And I said, no, it doesn't hurt. It's not painful. There's no injury. It's it just, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. And, and so we're like, okay, well, maybe it's just a, a thing. Maybe you tweaked it, something or whatever. It'll go away. So we waited a couple of weeks, and, and it progressively got a little bit worse. And so we're like, okay, maybe we should see somebody about it. Go to the family doctor. Family doctor's like, nah, you played football this fall. You had a pretty significant hit on your hip. Uh, I imagine that that is still, you're, you've created this habit of, of being tender and, and, and favoring that hip. This, it'll go away with time. We're like, okay. So we go through the continue, uh, can finish the basketball camp and continue moving on. And, and, and it, it comes into the new year and I'm still limping. I'm still having a, a hard time kind of getting around. And it's not painful, which is really weird. There's no injury. And uh, we didn't know what was going on. So we ended up going to the sports medicine specialist. And he takes one look at me. He does some range of motion stuff and, and, and examines my hip. And he says, you know what? I think I know what this is. I'm going to take a picture of your hip. I'm going to get an x-ray. And it's going to tell me whether or not this is what I think it is. So I get an x-ray. He comes in with the films. He says, yep, this is, this is, what, this is what I thought it was. This is what we call Perthes disease. Anybody hear of Perthes disease? It's not very common, yeah. So what Perthes disease is, is, is in the hip socket, right? So you've got the top of your leg bone, your femoral head, that's in your hip socket. The blood circulation to your femoral head gets cut off somehow. They believe it's from some kind of blunt force trauma sometimes, and so for me, it was a football hit, right? I, they believe it was a football hit that I took that fall that had cut off the blood circulation to my femoral head. And so what happens is, is if the bone's not getting blood, and in medical field, you may know this better than I would, it's the bone starts to soften and essentially kind of fall apart and dissolve. And you lose the curvature and the round shape of that femoral head, which can create all kinds of problems, right? So they say you're going to have to have a couple surgeries, one for sure, maybe a second one, and, and we'll see how it goes. First one, we're going to cut a tendon, get your legs in this particular position to restore blood flow. And we're going to cast your legs from your hips all the way down to the bottom of your toes on both legs. Not only that, we're going to have to spread your legs so that we can get blood flow going again, and we're going to put a wooden bar between your knees to secure your legs in that position. Great. This sounds wonderful. <laughs> we measured it at one point in time, right? So from ankle to ankle was four feet. I would try and show you what that is, but I would probably split my pants. So I'm not going to do that. Um, also, fun fact... Um, many of you may know this if you're in any kind of construction or builders, and I think I've learned this. The average single door frame, the average width is about two and a half, three feet. I got four feet wingspan going on here. How am I going to get through doorways? <laughs> So what we would have to do, I'd have to do this at school, I'd have to do this at church, I'd have to do this wherever I went as I was able to go. Uh, someone would stand in front of me, would walk through the doorway backwards, would hold the wooden bar between my knees, flip my legs up vertical, twist me in this wheelchair and pull me through the door. There are pictures to prove this. I didn't bring them because I didn't want to embarrass myself anymore. But uh, just a crazy, crazy time. And, and so I had that surgery on my 11th birthday. I had the cast then for six weeks and the end of my fifth grade year, I was pretty bummed. My parents always tell me, they're like, you had a, such an amazing demeanor and a mood. I, I wonder if they were just speaking faith into my, my time, my life at that point. But, but it was a bummer. Like I had all these limitations and restrictions. And man, I did. I had incredible family and parents and friends and people that were such a support around me to, to help me try and have as much fun as possible in this time, right? All my friends uh, that had minivans, their parents had minivans. They would take a couple seats out, you know, and I would sit down in the, in the, in the sliding door and kind of shimmy my legs up in. And it was fun. We'd go places and we went to ice skating rink, and ice skating in a wheelchair, a lot of fun. I tell you what, man, if you get a chance to do it, it's amazing. Uh, but anyways, but it was, it was really a crazy time. There were some limitations and restrictions and things that I couldn't do. There were things that I couldn't do as an 11-year-old boy that I would have, have absolutely loved to do. I remember sitting at home in, in, in tears and upset because I couldn't go play laser tag with my brother and his friends. That sounds kind of pathetic right now as I say that out loud. But, uh, but, it was, but it was tough. And, and, and man, in this season, I hope I'm not, I'm not touching a nerve with anybody, but in this season, haven't we had some limitations and restrictions that have kept our kids from experiencing everything that they could have? Man, what a tough time. What a tough time. And, 
And that's, I, this is just so hard. It breaks my heart when I think about um, everything that our graduating seniors and, 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 and our high school students and our junior high kids and our elementary kids and all the way down. I know our two little girls, um, if you haven't met my family, um, I usually bring pictures, but we're on a time crunch for service, so I didn't want to do any of that with you this weekend. But if you get a chance to meet my kids, I would love for you to meet them. Um, Noah is our four-year-old. He's our oldest, and Abigail's two, and Hannah will be one in a month. Uh, but our two girls, right, um, they're in that kind of stranger danger they were in that, Abby was coming out of it, and then locked down. It really exacerbated everything, right? And so uh, they only saw mom and dad for a matter of months. And um, just before coming in, Abby was screaming her head off because she didn't want to get left in class anyways. But, um, but it's, it's, it's just crazy how much things have affected and impacted our kids, right? And, and man, life is tough. I believe at any given moment, you're, you're either in a tough time, you're coming out of a tough time, or you're headed for a tough time. Scripture tells us that life is difficult. Jesus says that, that we can expect difficulty, that we have to be prepared, that we've got to have compassion for those that may be suffering. We've all been there. We've all been there. Maybe some of us more than others. And one question that that always seems to come up when we're in the midst of it, when we're wrestling with that struggle, the one question is why? Why? Why is this happening? Why did this have to happen? Why did I lose my job? Why did my business fail? Why doesn't he love me anymore? Why doesn't she respect me anymore? Why don't my kids listen to me? Why don't my parents hear me out? Why is my health and my body failing me? Why does Pastor Rick show up every single week looking so good? <laughs> Setting a standard that I'll never reach. No, I'm just <laughs> But why? And, and I want you to know, I believe, I believe that, that God is okay with our whys. I believe God's okay with our whys. I also believe that sometimes we'll never know why. We'll never know why. Have you ever tried to explain why to a toddler? Abigail's two years old, right? She was in that why phase. Why, 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 right? And uh, I, you know, growing up, something that my parents said, right, and I swore I would never tell my kids this. I would never say this to my kids. They would say, because I said so, Right? After about the 753rd time hearing why, you know what came out of my mouth? Yeah, because I said so. Man. But it, it's crazy. And so I'm trying something new with my daughter. I said, Abby, listen, when you question mommy and daddy what they've told you, it's really disrespectful. And you don't want to do that. She's two. I have no idea if it's getting through to her. I'll let you know how that goes. But uh, anyways, I, I, you know, and so God our Father, I, I think sometimes in his all-surpassing knowledge, and his, 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 his all-encompassing knowledge and knowing and understanding and omnipotence, there's no way for us to know why. There's no way for us to understand. And that's okay. He still loves us. Did you know that Jesus was asked why by the disciples? There's one point in his ministry where um, they're walking along and they encounter a, a blind man uh, who was born that way, a, a man who was born blind. It's in John chapter nine. I would love to read the whole story with you, but I, I can't for the, time of, for the sake of time. Um, but if you get a chance, go back and read it. It's an amazing story. So this, this man is born blind, and they ask, the, the, the disciples ask Jesus, why? Is it because of his sins? Is it because of the sins of his parents? What, what, why is he suffering? Why does he have to go through this? And I share this with you tonight because I think the way Jesus answered is still true today. Jesus responds to them in verse three, he says, this happened so that the power of God might be seen in him. The question that I have for us tonight then is this, when you're going through it, man, when you're in the middle of it, how is the power of God shining through? I'll be real, sometimes I don't see it. Sometimes I can't see it. And I don't know why, I don't, I, right, we're back to why, but I know that all things work to the good of those who are called, who love God and are called according to his purpose. Amen? 
And so we're in this, in this idea and this topic of, of suffering and why and, and, and to make Jesus visible and why does this happen, Jesus? It's so that the power of God might be seen. And, 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 and so how is the power of God shining through when we're going through it? Let me introduce to you uh, the Apostle Paul. Paul was once Saul. Many of you know uh, him and his story. In case you don't, let me give just a quick background. This dude was the Pharisees of Pharisees, right? He was, he was the, uh, 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 followed the letter of the law to the T. He knew all the traditions. He knew all the laws, all of the religious ideas of, uh, uh, of the beliefs at the time. He nailed them and he followed every single one. He sat under the teaching of one of the most respected rabbis at the time and, and he was the man in the Jewish world. And he hated the gospel. He hated Jesus' followers. And he persecuted them intensely. In fact, you guys remember Stephen? He was the first martyr to die for his faith. And uh, Saul was there when this was happening. And, and he says, oh, you want to kill Stephen? You want to kill this guy? Absolutely. Be my guest. Here, let me hold your coat for you while you do this. It says it in the scriptures. He held the, coat, the cloaks of the men that stoned Stephen. That's crazy. This man was intense. And he has a miraculous encounter with the risen Jesus and he switches teams. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He switches teams. He's, he's made blind for a couple days. He's got to go into the city, find Ananias and Ananias prays over him. His eyes are open. Scales fell off of his eyes and, and then he starts his journey. And he goes on these missionary journeys and, and I'm summarizing so much but I, go, I know you guys know this and have heard these stories before. And, and, and during his journeys, on these journeys, Paul was imprisoned. He was flogged. He was beaten. He was stoned. He was shipwrecked. He had gone without sleep and food. He had been in danger from various elements. Why do I bring all this up? Because Paul knows tough times. Paul gets it. He's lived it. He's experienced Tough times. As a matter of fact, later on in, in this same letter to the Corinthians, he talks about the thorn in his flesh. We don't know exactly what that thorn was, but you can bet it was pretty serious. I mean, we're not talking about like a pebble in your shoe <laughs> or Legos on your bare feet at 2 a.m. Probably pretty close. I would imagine if there's anything in this life that was close to the Paul's thorn in the flesh, probably a Lego stuck in your foot. Um, but Paul begged the Lord three times to take it away. Lord, take it away. Take this away. Take it away. Three times. Three separate times he begged the Lord. And you know what the Lord said? My grace is sufficient. My power is made perfect in your weakness. And so here we are introduced with this idea that's so counterintuitive. In my weakness, you're made strong. When I can't do it on my own, that's when you shine. When I've exhausted all options, when I've exhausted all of my strength, when I've exhausted all of what I'm capable of, that's when your power is made perfect. Wow, what an amazing thought. Do you, do you see where this is going? Why, Jesus, does this have to happen? It happens so that God, the power of God, can be seen through him. He had to be made weak so that God's, perfect, God's perfect power could be shown through him. Paul says, when I am weak, then I am strong. He writes in verse eight of chapter four, we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. I'm reading from the NLT right now. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we're not destroyed. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. That's chapter, I'm sorry, verse 10. Pressed but not crushed. Anybody, like, any big worship fans from like the early 2000s? Trading my sorrows, right? Every time I read this, I'm trading my sorrows, right? I mean, you know, and there's that, that part in the song, I'm pressed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, right? Struck down but not destroyed. I bet y'all didn't know I could sing, right? That's pretty cool. Israel, if you haven't heard this song, Israel Houghton um, is, my, is, my, is my boy, 
He's my man. I love Israel Houghton. If you don't know who that is, Israel Houghton, Google him, uh, Trading My Sorrows. I love his version of it. It's the best. You'll get a little glimpse into Pastor Scotty's music preferences. But I want you guys to picture these word pictures with me, okay? I think the words that are used here in what Paul's writing gives us some pretty specific ideas. So pressed but not crushed. Picture with me a quarterback under blitz, right? He pulls a Ben Roethlisberger, shakes off the blitzers, throws, rolls out and throws a touchdown pass. Woo, go Steelers, they win the Super Bowl. Best team in the NFL. Amen. Crickets, okay, awesome, okay. <laughs> but you feel trapped, pressed but not crushed. You feel trapped. Deadlines are looming, expectations, overwhelming responsibilities. The weight of your burdens can't feel any heavier. But you know that God is your strength. Pressed but not crushed. Perplexed but not in despair. Confused but not without hope. Sitting at the kitchen table with the household budget and stack of bills laid before you. The numbers don't add up. You don't know how you're going to make ends meet. But you know that God is your provider. Perplexed but not in despair. Persecuted, not abandoned. Hunted down like wild game, like a criminal. Hated by others because of your faith. But you know that God never leaves and will never forsake you. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Have you ever been knocked down, rejected, ridiculed, like a boxer getting knocked to the mat? We will take hits, and we will get knocked down. And the world will then start to count you out like the referee who's counting to 10. But because of the power of the Spirit of God inside of us, we get back up and we go back at it. Amen, church? Struck down, but not destroyed. Why is this happening? So that the power of God might be seen. Compelled, what is your struggle? What is your hard time? What is your difficulty? What is your suffering right now? Let me assure you, God does not send bad things on you because he hates you. God allows bad things to happen because he loves you. He wants to make his power perfect through your weakness. That brings me to my big answer. So when your kids pick you up from church tonight and they ask you, what did you learn? Probably not gonna happen, but maybe we'll see. You can say, God will risk your life in order to save your soul. God will risk your life in order to save your soul. You only get one. YOLO. Any millennials here? Know what I'm talking about? Sweet. All right. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> YOLO. You only live once. It was this crazy thing that was really trendy, whatever, and people did stupid stuff because YOLO. You only live once. I don't endorse that. But if there's some truth to it, you only live once. You get one time around the block. Scripture says you only get one chance at this life, and it's a fleeting, fleeting thing. But your soul lives for eternity. It's just a matter of where you're going to spend it. Do you know Jesus? Are you following Jesus? Then you'll spend eternity in paradise. God will risk your life in order to save your soul. So Pastor Scotty, what do I do? What do, what do we do? What, is, what does Jesus say to do when, when we're having tough times, when we're suffering, when we're struggling? Here's three things that I, uh, that I feel Jesus wants us to do from scripture, and these, those three things are this. First, you must expect hard times. You must expect hard times. First Peter 4.12. Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through as if something strange were happening to you. <laughs> I love the tone of uh, Peter's, Peter's writing in this, right? Uh, dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery, fiery trials. Really, Peter? Like, fire, that's the adjective you want to... I don't know if that's really the original Greek, but we'll go with it, okay, right? And then... The way he, as if something strange were happening to you. Like he, did, he turned a little sarcastic there, right? Like as if something strange were happening to you. Like don't be surprised. You must expect hard times. Second, you must prepare for tough times. 
1 Peter 4, 1, in that same chapter, just a few verses earlier, you must arm yourselves with the same attitude he, Jesus, had and be ready to suffer too. Lastly, you must have compassion for those who suffer. I'm gonna take a couple minutes on this one. 2 Timothy 2, 3, endure suffering with me as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. That's Timothy writing, uh, writing and, and he's asking to endure with him, right? And so, also in 1 Corinthians, we talk about the body. Paul writes about the body of Christ, and if one part suffers, all parts suffer. And if one part rejoices, then all parts rejoice, right? And so we're in this together. Compelled church, we're in this together. Life is tough, and God will risk your life to save your soul. Why do these things happen? So that the power of God may be seen. My grace is sufficient, says the Lord. My power is made perfect in your weakness. James writes in 5.13, he asks, are you suffering? If you're suffering, you should pray. If you're suffering, you should pray. Talk to Jesus. Ask him why. He'll be okay with your why. And be okay if you don't understand why. That's a hard place to get to, I know. But it's okay. Jesus is okay with our wives. I'm gonna share one more story with you and Pastor Rick's gonna come and prepare. He's gonna play a song with us. But <clears throat> as a young adult, I had a, a friend of mine, uh, a friend of mine who was in, we were in a Chi Alpha ministry uh, at the time. Some of you may know what Chi Alpha is. It's a, um, well, I don't want to explain it. But it's, it's a ministry for college students. And um, I had a friend of mine who was killed in a car accident. And he was driving, and he had his younger brother with him, and they, they believed, they were never really sure exactly what happened if he lost control, uh, and then something happened with his heart, either before or after impact, they're not sure. But he, he lost control of the car, was going at a high rate of speed, and, and they, they plowed into a corner of a house, and he didn't make it. His brother survived, he had broken both legs, some ribs, he was in pretty rough shape for a little while. The mom was a trauma ER nurse, and she was the one that received the ambulance when it came in. And I just, man, I, I can't imagine being faced with that difficulty, being faced with that, that trauma, that, that tough time. When we had a memorial service for Nathan, and um, they were absolutely adamant that we have praise and worship during this memorial service. Nathan was a worshiper. He loved Jesus with his whole heart. And his whole family was the same. And, and it was clear to me, it was evident to me that he got that from his parents. Because as they were worshiping the, the, the mom and dad, they were front and center, right at the altar, hand in hand, arms raised, worshiping Jesus. I didn't get the chance to ask them, why, how, how, could, you, how could you do that? How could you have the strength to do that? But knowing this family, I know they would have responded by saying, so that Jesus can be seen. So that the power of God can be made perfect in our weakness. Man, what an incredible revelation. And so what we're gonna do tonight, Compelled, is Pastor Rick is gonna play one song. And wherever you're at in your walk with God, if you're a follower of Jesus and been following strong for 10, 20, 30 years, maybe you're a baby Christian, if you're watching online, this is for, for you as well. But wherever you're at, if you wanna respond to this song, standing up, lifting your hands, if you wanna sit and contemplate the words, if you wanna kneel, if you wanna come to this space up here at the altar to worship God during your, through your tough time, this space is open to you. But wherever you're at tonight, Compelled, I want you to feel comfortable with Jesus. Talk to Jesus. Just spend some time with him. Ask him why. You can ask him your why and see what he says. Pastor Rick, would you lead us? I need you. 
Lord, we stand before you, we sit before you, we come before you broken, vulnerable, laid bare, whatever it may be, God. You know precisely what's going on in each of our lives. If we're in the middle of something, God, Lord, you, you right there with us. Lord, if we're coming out of something, God, I, I pray that we would give you praise and thanks for how you brought us through. And Lord, if we're headed for a new tough time, a new difficulty, a new struggle, a new suffering, may we always remember your grace is all we need. May we remember that your power is made perfect in our weakness and and God, you're not bringing these tough times to us to punish us or to, 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 to make us look weak or, or, or incompetent or incapable. But God, you're allowing these things because you love us and you want us to see your power. We thank you, Jesus. Wherever you are tonight, if, if you would say, you know what, Pastor Scotty, I've been thinking about this Jesus guy and, 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 and there's a decision that I've been faced with whether or not to follow him, whether or not to give him my life, whether or not to allow him to be Lord and Savior of my life. 
And if that's you tonight, I wanna pray for you. If that's you watching on our online campus, I wanna pray for you. And with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you would say, Pastor Scotty, pray for me, would you just slip your hand up? Online campus, you can click the, the hand raising option there. But if you want prayed for tonight, would you just slip your hand up? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Heavenly Father, you see these hands. Lord, you know exactly what's going on. And Lord, I pray as they decide to give their life to you, as they decide to follow you, I pray that you would be their comfort, be their peace, be their solid rock. For those that are suffering, God, we pray that you would give them peace, comfort, strength. Lord, I pray that you would let them know in their weakness you're made strong, that your grace is sufficient. And why is this happening? Maybe this is happening so that your power can be seen. Maybe this is happening so that Jesus can be visible. We thank you, Lord. We pray all these things in your holy and precious name. Amen, amen, amen. If you made a decision to follow Jesus for the first time, please let us know. You can come talk to me afterwards or fill out our digital connection card. There's an option to let us know there online. Please let us know as well. We'd love to pray with you more and anything you've got going on and, and, uh, and help you in this walk and in this journey of loving and living for Jesus. Amen. Can I just share a blessing over you guys? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord give you his peace. Amen. Go in peace of the Lord. We love you guys. Live compelled.